Good evening, everyone. It's really good to be here with you tonight to talk about the film Becoming Johanna. Uh, my name is Liz Owen. I'm the Director of Communications at PFLAG National. My pronouns right there are she and her. Uh, Becoming Johanna is a short documentary. It centers on Johanna, a 16-year-old transgender Latina who begins her transition and gets kicked out of her home and her school. She then finds a foster family who loves her and supports and a supportive principal who helps her graduate and thrive. Um, I know a lot of folks haven't yet had a chance to watch the film, so I thought it would be good to start with a quick look at the trailer of the film. So let's uh, let's take a look. When I was young, I played with Barbies and dolls. Like, I collected dolls. They were like my friends, I guess. You know, I didn't have an imaginary friend. I had dolls. I would role play and talk, and I would be the girl, and then somebody would be the boy. Biologically, I'm a boy, but I'm going to be a girl. I wanted to call it Johanna, but I couldn't. It was hard for me. I was thinking that maybe it was my fault. One day I went to church and I just kneeled down and prayed. She sent me to the mental hospital. Dun, dun, dun. I did things that the therapist told me to do as a parent. Yeah, but you're the parent. My, my you're the parent. Yeah, it's your sure responsibility. Okay. Yeah, which you should have handled. Well, I couldn't handle it. This household is just not a good thing for me. These are the pictures of my family members. I live with them. I accept any people. My son is gay, and I love him the way he is. Happy birthday. The last time I talked to my mom was, I think, two months ago. This is a legal name change form. My mom actually signed this to get rid of me, I guess. I don't know. The world is going to accept her, and she's going to do it, regardless of what the world does. The kids that do really well through transition, you're supported by their families. When you pull family support away, it's really, really difficult. You're going against all the odds. There's trans kids who can actually make it, and I want to prove it that I can make it. Such a good film. So I'm really excited to welcome my guests. First, uh, Jonathan Skernick is a documentary producer, director, and cinematographer. He has won numerous awards. His films have aired on PBS and other outlets, and he founded the Youth and Gender Media Project and other engagement projects that provide educational experiences through facilitated screenings and discussions. Welcome, Jonathan. Good to see you. Great to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, my next guest, Joel Baum, is the Senior Director of Professional Development at Gender Spectrum, which is a great organization that works to create gender, se gender sensitive and inclusive environments for all children and teens. Uh, PFLAG National is a longtime and proud partner with Gender Spectrum. We're always so grateful to work with them. Uh, welcome, Joel. Hey, thanks, Liz. Good to see you. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> hey, Joel. And then finally, uh, last but most definitely not least, the star of Becoming Johanna, Johanna Clearwater, is a 28-year-old trans Latinx woman who's grabbing life by the horns, being out and proud and living life as she knows it, while educating people on her own personal experience. And she hopes by traveling to different schools and cities that she can paint a picture about what it means to be trans and how important it is to show love and support for someone in her shoes, uh, a really P flag mission sharing personal stories to change hearts and minds. Welcome, Johanna. Hi. Good to have everybody here today. Um, so let's start with Jonathan. Jonathan, can you talk about how this film came about? Yeah, um, I started working on a series of uh, films about trans youth, working with Joel and Gender Spectrum very early on. Joel and I have been working together for like almost 15 years now. Um, and, and, and Gender Spectrum had, was having this uh, amazing convening uh, conference for parents of trans youth. And so I started exploring the, the making a variety of films. And so I actually worked with Gender Spectrum to make two really important films in the early part of the 210s, 2010s. Um, and, and then I realized we, we really needed a film about teens. And so I started volunteering at the Children's Hospital Transgender Youth Unit, led by, at that time, Bambi Salcedo. 
And um, I met amazing young people there and was filming with some of them, but Bambi recommended, Johanna is probably the best candidate for a film. And so Johanna was very young at the time. Uh, she was 16. And so we talked about the possibility of working together and we started filming together. And over the over five years, we filmed um, very occasionally, just, just a few weeks a year at the most, or a few days a year. But we got enough good footage to create this beautiful half hour film about Johanna's learning to thrive and getting the support she needs. So it was such an honor to work with Johanna and build a friendship that continues today. That's so, and it was a long period of filming. You said. Yeah, we filmed from, from Johanna from age 16 to 21. Oh, that's a long period of filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Johanna, what was that experience like for you to tell your story, work with Jonathan? That's a, that's a personal experience. Yeah, yes it was. I honestly had no idea what I was getting into when I was that young. I I think I was just, I was like, yes, why not? Like like most things I feel like I currently do, I very much just want to try and see. Um, but I didn't realize what level of impact it was going to have in my life or in other people's lives by watching my story. Um, but as an adult, I'm able to reflect and see how powerful it is, not just for other people, for, for me to be able to watch and watch back and how my life was so, and to see how far I came. Um, yeah, I was going to say, what's it like to watch it now? Have you gone back and watched it recently? And what's that experience like? Uh, so there's certain things that I would say I, I hmm, it's like, it's very much like I would say, other people have different chapters in their lives. And I feel like that one really encompasses what uh, my life was like as a trans, like young Latina woman growing up with someone who wasn't, who didn't have supportive parents necessarily, but they definitely had supportive um, people throughout her life, like my own life. And I also realized that like, now I'm like different chapters. Like even after we finished filming, I was like in a different place. Um, I was like in a relationship and the way the film ended wasn't necessarily the whole story, right? There's still more to my story, it just doesn't end right there. There's more to it. And even till like fast forward for like six years, I, it's, it's a completely different story. Um, so I don't know, it's been really good to be able to like reflect and be able to watch my own life um, during that time. So. Yeah, it's like a beautiful snapshot of a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Like a living diary, uh -huh. um, which can be wonderful and maybe, you know, uh, other feelings too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mixed, mixed feelings. Um. Um, so Joel, um, I, and I, get, I didn't realize that your relationship with Jonathan had gone back for, for so long to when you were both children, practically. Um, <laughs> so how important are films like Becoming Johanna to making a difference in the lives of you know, trans and non-binary gender diverse kids and their families? Yeah, I think films like this are, are so critical because you know the conversation that's occurring right now about transgender young people and gender diverse young people is often reduced to these tropes, right? These ideas of like, there's one size, this is the only story, it only plays out like this. Um, and I, what I love about Johanna's story and other films is every one of these young people are complex, leading really complex lives that are partly about their gender, but they're not just defined by their gender alone, right? Mm -hmm. Johanna had dreams and is an artist and, you know, and ha has a sense of humor and um, has relationships just like many, you know, trans young people. In fact, hey, guess what? Like many young people, because being trans is just part of their story. Our gender is just part of all of our stories. And so I think what's really important is they demonstrate, um, you know, that that being trans and, and having a, you know, your gender defined in a particular way does not define you entirely. I also think uh, it's, it's really, really powerful um, to be able to see the impact that adults can have on the lives of young people, um, because we clearly see both in the challenges Johanna experienced with, with her own uh, biological family, but also the magic of her found family um, and, and what an impact that can have on the trajectory of a young person. And I think that's really, really critical as well. And then, you know, I think films like this are so critical um, because they introduce us to wonderful individuals out there in the world doing great things, so.
Absolutely. And I love what you said, you know, that it really is, you know, the truth is kids are kids are kids and they're all made up of multitudes of components and to reduce any one young person down to just one component of their life ignores so much of what makes us complex human beings. And why would that be any difference for a person of trans experience or non-binary experience or cisgender experience? Um, you know, it really ignores the fact that kids, they may be young, but they're complex, you know? Um, I really appreciate what you said. Um, so Johanna, so this film will, I about almost 70 of our chapters uh, have watched this film this month and had discussion groups and we've been getting tons of messages from them about what a positive experience it has been, how much they have loved this movie. Um, one of them sent us a message saying that they broke into discussion groups and I think the meeting ran an hour over because they wanted to keep talking. So it's having a really positive, I know, right? I, I did not share that with you before the broadcast because I remembered I wanted to and I forgot. So I'm telling you that on camera, my apologies. <laughs> Um, but hopefully that's a good thing. You know, they, it's, it's having a really profound impact on people. So what do you hope that folks watching this movie take away from the film? What, what is important, do you think, for them to know or learn? I'm just going to slightly just touch base on what Joel is saying about uh, it's like all of us have our experience with, with a gender, um, with our gender identity, right? Um, some of us just takes it direction though it goes mine or other people with their cis identities. I'm just going to say that the big takeaway that I want from like this film project or part of my story is that regardless of our identities, I think bottom line is that we all deserve some level of love, especially specifically someone, let's say hypothetically, you have kids with trans experiences that shouldn't take away from you loving them or, uh, supporting them to get to their higher selves, get, get to whatever goals that they're trying to achieve. Um, I think that's one of the biggest ones. And sometimes the importance of how it takes a village really to like raise a kid, you know, regardless of whether or not I stayed with my blood family or not, like I was raised by multiple people, um, friends, parents, like a lot of things that wasn't captured on this, through this film project was that I lived with parents, with friends, parents, um, for individually for like one year each and then I enter the system and yeah so I have a lot of people coming in and out of my life and I had to learn as an adult that that isn't necessarily always a bad thing um, there's a lot of good that could come from that and those are the two things I would love for someone to take away from this film project. I'm really glad that you raised that too, the, the critical importance of found family and chosen mm -hmm. family that, you know, family is what you make it. And there are many ways to make family. Mm -hmm. um, and we, of course, hear that a lot at PFLAG. And I think, you know, to, to broaden our experience and understanding of what family is and what it means and what value it brings um, is really important. So thank you for raising that. Um, so Jonathan, we actually, we have people asking questions, which I think is great. Um, uh, and folks are asking where they can see the film. Some of them are P-flaggers, some of them are not. I've brought up information on where they can get it, but I would love for you to share more about what's next for the film and also what's next for, for, for you in general. Okay, great. Um, yeah, well, we're very excited that uh, Becoming Johanna is gonna have a national PBS broadcast this June for Pride Month and both PFLAG National and Gender Spectrum are underwriting the broadcast. I'm so grateful to both of your organizations to make for making this happen, enabling it. So thank you so much for supporting it. And we expect to be in um, up to 150 cities, mark, what they call markets all over the country. Um, and we're working with the individual programmers in each of these station, PBS stations to do uh, additional work around the broadcast like we're doing now with, with PFLAG National. And so we're very excited for that to happen. Um, in addition, I just want to say, like, you, Johanna, you were talking about, like, stages of your life and, I th and the impact of the film. And I think one of the most satisfying things for me was that you and I got to t tour for about two, on and off, like, two and a half years all over the country, showing the film, leading discussions. And I got to watch you become, like, an incredibly... Uh, poised and brilliant public speaker. And one time we even spoke at a conference, was it either before or after Jill Biden, when Joe Biden was still running for president? And I proudly say that 
Johanna got a bigger standing ovation than Jill did. <laughs> <laughs> so. That was pretty cool. That was <laughs> I love that. Um, so I guess if folks are hoping to see this film and PBS, they could probably contact their local PBS to say they would like to see the film. Yeah, I mean, it's a good chance it'll be there anyway, but if, if um, it would be helpful to just contact your PBS station and say, I heard that this is being offered to, to PBS stations and I'd love for you to carry it. Because each station, there's 350 some odd stations, each one gets to decide what films they want to carry. So um, we're putting out a big effort to get stations all over the country to carry it. But if people local to those stations ask for it, that helps. So that, that would well, be great. 410 odd chapters in all 50 states. I think maybe we could get to 300 markets, maybe. We can work on that. So <laughs> figure that out with in partnership with Gender Spectrum. Um, and, and just just to continue a little bit more about the question. So the Youth and Gender Media Project has these four films, one for one, two of, that we co-produce with Gender Spectrum, one about, teen, uh, one about teens, which is for is the Johanna film, one called I'm Just Annika about middle schoolers, one called Creating Gender Inclusive Schools, which shows gender spectrum training an entire school district on how to uh, create inclusive environments for trans and gender non-conforming youth. And then one for families called the parent the the family journey. So our our goal in putting out and my goal in putting out all four of these films is that a school could actually buy all four films and then have an evening or a screening for every constituency within the school to get them up to speed around inclusion around trans and gender fluid youth. So um, and I have to say I'm proud to say that those films are being used in literally hundreds, if not thousands, of schools um, and colleges all over the country and in North America and in Australia and England. So. So it's been, had a really big impact, and and you know it's it's it, Joel and Johanna are really completely why this was enabled enabled to happen because of their cooperation and enthusiasm and 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 collaboration. So I am so grateful for that. That's amazing, and hopefully folks will go check out the website so they can see all these projects and figure out, learn how to access these films. And you know I'm a big fan of using media for good. I love the intersection of entertainment and cause. So uh, I'm excited about this film for that very reason. Um, so Joel, I wanna go back to something you said earlier, talking about um, you know, in the film that we saw the positive uh, impact of supportive educators. Um, so in your experience, can you talk about the importance of supportive adults in general, educators and others in the lives of trans, non-binary and gender diverse youth? Yeah, of course. I think, you know, in some ways it's so obvious, right? Kids do better when the adults in their lives are behind them and loving and supportive of them. Um, but it's a little more complicated than that because, of course, uh, as parents, you know, our children's experiences um, are also deeply entwined with our own. And so when when we are, are uh, raising a child whose gender perhaps has surprised us in some way, it can definitely take you aback a little bit, right? It makes sense. Um, but I, I really do want to emphasize that there is no single determinant that's more impactful than the uh, affirmation or lack thereof of parents for their trans and non-binary young people. Um, from a lot of great research, but particularly the research of Caitlin Ryan and the Family Acceptance Project, we know tangibly, measurably, the impact that certain behaviors have on the health and well-being of young people, the degree of those behaviors, as well as the behaviors themselves. And what's really powerful about that is we can now look at parenting behaviors and say with pretty good confidence, like these behaviors lead to these outcomes. What's powerful about that is we have to move away from this idea of parent supportive or non-supportive and the judgment that comes to the parents and instead focus on their behaviors, focus on their choices, focus on the ways in which they're choosing to interact with a young person. Because again, it's like make an informed choice. That said, um, you know, whether it's an educator, whether it's a coach or, or a, a youth leader of some kind, even when families um, are not necessarily on board, um, other adults can have such a huge impact as well. And again, we saw it with uh, uh, Deb in, in this film, but we've seen it in so many different cases where another adult simply saying to a young person, I see you, I love you, I value, 
in 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 Johannesburg. I'm going to hold you accountable. <laughs> you're going to graduate, but you're going to have to do the work, right? All the ways that that uh, an adult simply says, "I see you and honor you." Um, it, it's so critical. Um, and for families that do struggle, you know, we we've, we've been doing some work with a number of school districts um, at, and student services departments. And, and one of the questions that frequently comes up is how to work with families that are struggling or not affirming of their child. Um, and it's to remind parents, you know, the child's gender, again, it's what I said earlier, the child's gender is only part of, of who they are. And, and someone had this great suggestion. She called it the, the Oprah trick. She said, I want you to imagine that Oprah is, is interviewing someone about your child and asking what are all the great things about your child? What would that person say to Oprah, right? And reminding that parent, of course, that their child has all sorts of aspects, um, all sorts of things that are still there. They're still rambunctious and funny and sensitive and a good big brother and, you know, uh, uh, you know, sloppy and don't make their beds and, you know, all the things that make them who they are that, again, are outside their gender. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is, you know, so often this work gets framed around, gosh, I hope things won't be terrible. I hope they'll be okay. And we often fail to recognize what it actually means to see a young person being themselves and the power and joy that has. In other words, there's a whole set of possibilities we often forget about because we're worried about, I hope everything will be okay, instead of recognizing how powerful it can be when we create space for anyone, but particularly young people, to be the, the, fully themselves and fully authentic. Thank you for that. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. And making making space for their kids, and then as Gender Spectrum does, as PFLAG does, making space, and I apologize because my dog, there's an entirely good possibility you're going to hear a lot of very loud barking in a moment. So my apologies in advance if that happens. We're just rolling with it. It's 2021. Um, that, um, you know, making space for parents to have peer to peer conversations so that they can process the emotions that they're having and still affirm and support and love their kids, but have those feelings and those conversations in a place that's safe for them, not with their kids. It is not their kid's job to help them process those emotions. It's their kid's job to be a kid. It's the parent's job to love and support them and to find appropriate support and peers and, and professionals if needed to have those conversations, not to have them with their children. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. I really do just want to emphasize that again, because of course, you know, it, it you know, uh, a, a young person's uh, gender journey is a team sport. However, um, it's really, really critical that, you know, the adults who have their processes they need to go through, they need to not do that on the kid's clock. Um, they need to do that in their own spaces. They need to do that in a way that that allows them to get the support, but not by saying to the child, for instance, well, this is really hard for me, too, and you just don't right. understand how difficult it is for me. Because, yeah, maybe, but again, you're the grown-up, and, and your job is to take care of that kiddo. So find the support, but don't do it on your kid's time. And I love Joanna in the movie, and I'm gonna bring up a question there. So we're getting some beautiful comments here and I'm gonna scroll through them in a moment and bring a few of them up. Um, you met in the trailer, it has that moment, right? Like you're the parent, you're the parent. Like I love that moment where you say that, that even at 16, you were very much aware of the fact that you're the parent, that's the, that's the adult job. My job is to be the kid and do what I need to do. Um, yeah. So we have a, a lovely question here that sort of goes along with the lines of the question I was going to ask. So I'm going to bring it up here about if you could give a message to your high school self, what might that message be? <laughs> that, oof, there's so many things I would tell myself when I was younger. Um, some with patience, like you will get to the goals that you're looking for. I also would probably re clarify why I want certain goals and just be like, what is the reason behind it? Like, is it like, like what, what, what are the goals? Like outside of gender identity, like what are your goals? Um, and that you deserve the love that, you know, that you deserve and that you want. So 
That's a good one. Three. Yeah. Three big ones. There's more, but some of them might just be kept for myself. That's okay. That's fair. You don't, you don't have to go through all of them. I think yeah. there's a few really good heartfelt top line messages. Hard um, to argue with, you know, we all deserve love. I think that's a good one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, um, I like I said, we do have some really uh, lovely messages coming up here too, and I do want to bring some of them up, uh, which is this one uh, from a group that uh, the president of P Flag Sedona. They watched the movie. They had a great discussion that went on for about ninety minutes. Um, the first part of the message said that you inspired them to live authentically and working through their fears, and that you rock. Basically, they want you to know that. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole thing is people just who loved the film and thanking you for sharing your story and so appreciating that. I'm um, glad I can help, but you also did all the work. I just want to say, like, you you did it. You made it. Um, yeah. So I recognize we're getting close to our time, so I'll, I'll, I'll go around the room, the virtual room, and say... Um, if you could share a message of hope with a with a, a trans or non-binary gender creative youth or teen watching right now, um, what would that message be right now? I can start with any of you. I can start. I think I would just touch base more with what I was saying earlier about other parts of your journey that I would focus on as well. Um, personally, not every not every trans identity. Um, this journey is the same, you know, like we might all be, all be under the same umbrella, but we all have our own journeys. So really just reflect and deep, dig deep on what exactly is that you're looking for, um, both for, for you and your physical journey, if that is the case, but also outside of that, like what, what are other aspirations you're hoping for? Are you looking to travel? Are you looking to start a family? Like what type of job do you want? And also understand that all of that is interchangeable as time goes on. Like there is no set stone way of how to live your life um, just because you're trans, right? So um, also like go through with your curiosity. If you're curious about doing something, lead in with it. As long as it's not hurting anybody, I say lean in with it. And also just never lose that that little thing that makes you you, you know, like there's like this little spark of innocence, probably as an example or something else. Don't lose that. I think that's really important. And that the whole love part too, like you deserve exactly what you, what you want out of life. And this is your, your life. This is your one life. So strive for the best if that's what you want. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. Um, Jonathan, Joel. Yeah, um, I'll dive in. Um, so I, I'm not. I don't, don't deign to give advice to uh, trans youth because I, I don't have that experience. But what I would say is to adults who want to be mm -hmm. excellent allies to trans youth. Um, you know, a lot of adults when we're talking to youth, whether they're trans or not, we often have an agenda. Like, what are you going to do with your life? And we, we ask questions that like maybe are helpful, maybe not. Like. You know, one of the advantages of being a documentary filmmaker is you you wear the listening hat and you really learn to listen. And so I think as an adult, being an ally and someone who wants to love and be caring for trans youth or, or, or any kind of youth struggling with identity is just listen. Like, and don't ask leading questions about like what you want to do with your life and what are you studying in 10th grade and all that. Like, just, just say, I'm here for you and I want to hear your story and I want to hear what you have to say and just be willing to sit in silence if, the, if they're not talking and wait and just be a presence of loving care. I think that's like the, the message I would give to folks who wanna really get in there and be good allies. Um, and then the other thing I would just say is a call to action. Um, mm -hmm. Despite uh, the shift in the, uh, the leadership at the federal level, there's all these states that are now trying to pass anti-trans youth legislation. So if you're in one of those states, find out who are the groups that are fighting that legislation and, and throw in your throw in your hat and see if you can give a hand for that because that legislation is devastating it's mean and it's just and it's just completely misguided and it needs to be stopped so if if you're in one of those states do do what you can to to to, to stop that legislation and thank you for saying that and actually we are doing that work i'm sure you know gender spectrum is supporting that work and um i'll i'll bring up a ticker where people people can visit and um take some action on that at the state 
level because it's uh, it's really uh, important. Yeah, thank you for naming that, Jonathan. There's some very, very hateful uh, bills out there that are, are just so, I mean, just shame on you for the way you're treating young people. Um, what I would say, and again, I appreciate, Jonathan, you saying, like, I am not a trans person. And so, but what I would say to, to young people is you do know who you are and don't let anyone tell you you don't. Um, as you assert your sense of self, know that you're not alone, know that your truth is your truth, and it's okay not to have it all figured out if your identity has moved from trans to fluid to non binary whatever, that is part of your journey. It doesn't change who you are. You know who you are, and so please um, know that you're not alone. Know that people do see you, um, even if it's not always obvious or in front of you um, right now, but just know there are people out there who you can connect with who are, are um, on similar journeys, um, and you can get a lot of strength from them. Um, and then to those parents, do reach out to groups like PFLAG, to Gender Spectrum, get the support you need. There is a pathway, again, not just towards making it as a family, but towards um, a celebration. What I love about Jonathan's film, The Family Journey, is it really moves, it, it really shows parents moving from the challenge to understanding to celebration of their young people. And that is possible, even at times where it feels so overwhelming. It's a possibility. It's out there. And, and you know, you just have to look at Johanna to see that things can end up in pretty amazing places. So, Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. This is a great conversation, getting lots of love in the comments. So I hope folks will. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And um, please go uh, to the website, youthandgendermediaproject.org, to learn more uh, about this film and the others. Um, that are all available and uh, we'll be getting information out to folks so they can reach out to their local PBS station so we can make sure it's showing as broadly as possible. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today in advance of Transgender Day of Visibility tomorrow. So grateful to all three of you for being here. Thanks, Liz. Thank you so Thanks much. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for all the lovely messages. All right. Good night, all. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.